This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to inthemoneystocks.com. Welcome. This is your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is 10 14 20. This is show number 137. And Nick, uh, hey, so much news going on, but let's talk about what happened yesterday. Major pullback in the indices and in gold and silver. Yeah, we we well the the market's pulled back, but that's common after a, a rally that you get on Monday. So and it's also options expiration uh, this Friday, so for the month of October. So we have to take that into account as well. Generally, when we get those Monday rallies, we'll do a lot of backing and filling throughout the remainder of the trading week. So you know it, it's understandable to see that kind of action. But gold got hit pretty hard yesterday. Um, any way you slice it or dice it, it, it was down pretty significantly uh, even into the to the close. But today, you know, it's rebounding. And, and like I've been saying, it's just going to do a lot of backing and filling here. But this is, this is exactly what you want to see if you're bullish gold. I mean, you don't want to see it go up right now. We just had a monster move in 2020. We rallied up all the way into uh, uh, August. And again, uh, I believe on the futures, we got as high as 2089. Now we're, you know, sitting out here around 1900, a little bit above 1900, 1914. This is what you want to see, consolidation, put in that sideways move, and then you'll get the big, big pop down the road. And again, the next, the next run should be a major run uh, in gold and in silver. So uh, I like everything I'm seeing. I, I love that sell-off yesterday. I like what it's doing today, catching back up, rallying up today. Today you have gold futures trading higher at the moment by $19. So we're, we're trading right at 1914. It's really, really good, choppy, sideways action. Hey, so just share with us 50-day uh, moving average, 100-day, and 200, where they are now and why that's significant. Yeah, so price right now in gold futures is just below the 50-day moving average, which is around 1944. The 100-day moving average is around 1871. Just so everybody's aware, gold seems to love the 100-day moving average. I don't know why, but... I've been tracking gold for as long as I have. It always seems to be uh, a pretty important uh, level. Even if you look at the monthly chart, you'll notice back in 2018, gold couldn't get above its 100-day moving average. Every time it went up there, basically in January, February, March, and April, it, it couldn't get through the 100-month moving average. It pulled back, and then when it finally got above the 100-month moving average in June of 2019, uh, that was right around $1,350. It broke out to the upside, never really has looked back since. So uh, keep an eye on them. But uh, yeah, right now uh, we're, we're basically trading currently uh, on a daily chart, trading in between the 50 and 100 day moving average. And I, I just want to see more sideways action, build more of a base. And then once you get a trigger, uh, gold is going a lot higher. Yeah. I couldn't agree with you more that one that fifty day moving average it's doing what you always say breaks that and then it pulls back just under it and kind of bounces around there going up and down and up and down and you said that's a major chart formation that's right that's how these formations play themselves out and you got to remember you you want to get people involved and then you want to get the weak hands out. And that's what's called, uh, you know, uh, up and down movement, or we used to call it in the, in the 90s, a little cha-cha dance. And uh, that's what we see almost every day. We're just getting a lot of that whipsaw. But ultimately, on the bigger time frame, meaning the weekly and monthly charts, we're really just building a sideways consolidation pattern. And that ultimately leads to a continuation move to the upside. Yeah, and, and these the junior miners, the gold stocks, they've performed so well they've pulled back i'll bet they're under their 50-day moving average too a lot of no them they're yeah. they're actually above so if you look at the gdxj which is uh the vectors etf for the junior gold miners they're actually a little bit above the 50-day moving average and they're decently above the 100-day so the 100-day moving average right now on the gdxj is at 54 dollars 47 the 50-day moving average is around 
58.27, and price right now on the GDXJ is at 59.61. So it's acting very, very well. But I will say this. You have a big resistance level right around the 60 and a half to $61 level. So it's going to take some more consolidation to really break through. But the junior miners are acting very, very strong right now. All right. And that's what we like to hear because the profit potential is so great in them. Uh, I know there's stocks that you wouldn't play because the liquidity on them, options and all that, is just not there. But some of them are tra were trading it like literally a penny or two. And now they're up to 20, 30 cents. It's been a, a stratospheric rise there. Yeah. And, and just like, you know, I always talk about the Russell 2000 here. The Russell 2000, which represents the small caps, is showing leadership. That's always a bullish indication. Same thing for, you know, the junior miners. Junior miners are showing leadership. That's a bullish indication going forward. And right now, the gold miners are stronger than gold price. And that's always a bullish indication as well going forward. Hey, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we're seeing uh, we're seeing pretty much the market really firming up. All the pundits are saying it's going down lower, especially the election, all that. It's holding up pretty darn well when you consider what's going on in the world, COVID, the election, all of these things. It's really made a stand here. Oh, it's made a great stand. It's climbed the wall of worry. And when you climb the wall of worry, that's a bullish indication as well. So, you know, I, I actually like everything the market has done. We did have a big, big sell-off in September, as expected. So, you know, we, we got the September 2nd high. We sold off into the 24th. But since then, the market's held up very, very well. And it's still holding up well. Even, you know, some backing and filling like you got yesterday, or even if you get a little bit of a down day today, I think we should get a little bit more of it. But right now, the charts are firming. Uh, the, the moving averages are lower than price, meaning the S&P 500, which is trading at around, uh, we'll use the spiders, we could use the cash also, it's trading around uh, 35.16. Uh, you're above the 50-day, the you're above the 100-day, you're well above the 200-day. You're just still a little bit below the September high, but we could be putting in a consolidation pattern to attack those old highs. So I, I like everything the market is doing here. And um, <clears throat> I, I, ahead of this election, I think it's acting really, really well because we could always be due to uh, always have that election risk involved. Uh, but right now, the markets, in my opinion, are pricing in a Trump victory. Hey, so U.S. dollar, all right, it took a big hit. It's down in that 93, 94 range, down a little bit today. It was, uh, was up pretty major, like close to 50 basis points yesterday. But even the dollar is kind of holding out here. Yeah, the dollar's been in a real sideways trend since August. It had that big, big sell-off in, in late July, early August. And since that point, it's really just been going sideways. So we've been in what we call a consolidation range for the U.S. dollar index. The high end of the range on the current contract um, is around uh, 94.80. The low end of the range, in my opinion, is probably around 92. 50, 92, 75. Today we're at 93.31. So I think we're just in a range here, but um, I'm watching the dollar closely because I think the dollar bottom is very, very much in, uh, could be in. And uh, if we do go lower, I don't think we're going to go lower by much at this stage of the game. So we'll be keeping an eye on the dollar, but you know, the dollar for the most part has been very, very range bound over the last two months. Yeah, well, there's probably a lot of foreign investors, even though. They want to be putting their, their assets into the dollar and the so-called safe haven trade probably are holding off till after the election. Absolutely. I agree 100 percent, especially when you hear the polls. Um, you know, I don't think anybody will uh, get involved in the dollar uh, if, if there's a Joe Biden victory, to be honest. So, um, again, uh, you'll start to see money, I think, flow back into the dollar uh, from from foreign uh, places. Uh, but that won't, as you said, won't occur until after the election. Hey, great point. I don't want to get into politics other than to say you need to be watching all the news sources out there. Forget the mainstream, lamestream media, particularly the right-leaning websites, but even the New York Post. Read the New York Post today. There's some amazing disclosures. I think all of that is coming into play. We're going to see a lot more 
uh, I think we're going to have to redefine the concept of the October surprise in another couple weeks, Nick. Yeah, I, I, I've been telling my uh, my members, just get ready. You're going to hear news you never thought you would hear about. And um, I, I look at a lot of, uh, of different uh, patterns and configurations of all sorts of charts to tell me that. And that, that seems to be what's happening. So we're, we're going to sit tight. We'll sit back and uh, we'll just enjoy the show. Enjoy the show. Make sure, though, that uh, you buckle your seatbelts because it's going to be a rough ride. Think about when you're in an airplane approaching an airport and there's really horrible weather, thunderstorms all over and you're getting bounced around the sky, and there's lightning and thunder. And pilot, they know how to handle it. They just take the plane right in and land. That's where we're at now. Yeah, it seems to be the case. And, um, you know, just to get ready, the news flow, I think, is going to be explosive. So I've already told my membership that even last night I stressed it upon them, and I said, get ready, you know, and I talked about some of the things I was looking at. And I said, you know, you have to be on guard here, uh, especially as a trader. But um, again, this all is starting right in Options X, and that never seems to, uh, always ceases to amaze me, but I'm not really surprised at this stage of the game. Hey, and we, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention a few earnings came out on the financials today. That's right. Yesterday we had uh, JP Morgan. That was the big one. But today we had Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo. While there was nothing really special in these announcements, we are looking at Wells Fargo getting hit by about 5%, Bank of America down 4%, and Goldman Sachs is up about a uh, little over three-tenths of 1%. So again, uh, financial struggling. Bank of America really did not have a great report from what I saw. I just saw the headlines. I don't care too much about the reports. I just care about the reactions. And um, we'll be watching uh, and to see what, uh, what, what the uh, rest of these uh, financials say later this week. And next week, we start to get the big tech numbers, too. So uh, be aware of that. Yeah, and maybe we'll find out more about these financial stocks after Options X on Friday. And, and that could, uh, then we'll find out what's really going on. Yeah, once we get through Options expiration, um, we'll start to get the, uh, the, the financial, we'll start to get the big tech earnings next week. Uh, we'll, we'll get a little bit more of a clearer picture. But just watch the charts. We'll just watch the pattern. Let that chart tell us what to do. Right now, um, you know, this is options X, so I expect stocks, the popular names at least, will be all over the map. All right. Well, that's it for today. Go over to Nick's site, inthemoneystocks.com. Check out his trading record. Check out the Twitter feeds, at ITMS, at NickSantiago01, at Terry Lutz. Email us, kl, at terrylutz.com. We'll still read some of your emails later in the week, promise. And that's it for today. Nick, we'll talk to you again tomorrow. Sounds good, Kerry. Have a great day. And so concludes another episode of Daily Market Wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Be sure to go to his website, inthemoneystocks.com. Don't forget the Twitter feeds, at ITMS and at NickSantiago01. 